I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is a nice uh, oak table. I want to say it's a turn of the century table, but I think we need a new term now that it's 2021. So what I mean is circa 1900. There were a lot of tab tables like this made around that time. This is a really nice one. I like these legs a lot. The, uh, on these tables, there was over the years, there was all different types of legs and variations. There are some good examples in this book I have. You can see one here, heavily influenced by the uh, Jacobean type furniture, which is very common around that period. Another table with square legs and uh, conventional details. And this one with some very interesting legs, just what I call kind of a fantasy leg, but interesting. This beehive turnings were popular around that time too. And then these legs are different yet again. Now, here's the issue. The table needs to be refinished. It, the finish just isn't that great on the top. It's wearing away its stuff. The legs are uh, particularly beat up. Uh, there's only one thing to be repaired. This apron needs to be glued back. Now, this broke because the arms of a chair kept hitting it. And the owners had this table up on some square blocks. So what I need to do is raise the height of this table. I'm going to add some blocks between the feet, the leg assemblies, and underneath. But we also want to make some feet. This table originally had casters. These type casters just really don't make it on big tables like that. Typically, typically I like to replace casters if they were there originally. Uh, in this case, I'm going to try to come up with a design to make some blocks on the bottom of this feet that might look like they belong. And the table has four leaves also. They're in really rough shape. I'm going to remove this extension set. It'll just make life easier. And then I'll also be able to really open this up and check it out and lubricate it properly. Also, these dowel screws just make it really difficult to flip this table over. As you can see, I got another bench here, so I have a bench under each half. I love these uh, old Victorian locks. Oh. <laughs> these screws are in the way of my clamping board here.
Now, I need to figure out what I need to uh, make some feet for this thing. Now, <clears throat> I haven't designed these feet yet, but I'm just going to choose elements from the, these turnings here and translate it into about a two and a half inch version. I'm going to have to draw that up and fool around with it. I don't think I need to use quarter sawn oak for this. I think I can use plain sawn oak. So what do I mean by quarter sawn oak? Well, this era of furniture, uh, that was the predominant wood that they used. And quarter sawn oak is easily spotted because of these capillary rays that run uh, perpendicular to the regular grain. And people call it tiger oak and things like that. That looks good. Okay, the table is ready to be stripped. And uh, I know in a recent video you may have seen me strip a tabletop. I do the occasional tabletop. But in a case like this, I do it the smart way. I take it to the stripper guys. Between the two tabletop halves, four leaves, and all the leg assemblies, it's definitely what is that, six piece, seven, nine pieces, I'm taking it to the strippers. Okay, back from the strippers. I uh, got a lot of sanding to do. I got a couple of joints that opened up here. Uh, let's see if they have any movement. And this looks like a natural check in the wood, but I better see if it's moving too. I'm cranking this clamp down. I'm seeing no movement here. Yeah, no movement in this check either, but uh, I'll still glue that little sliver down. This crack is too narrow even for a piece of veneer. I'm just going to use a regular wood putty and I'm going to put tape on either side of the crack. 
just to keep the putty from going into the grain. This is open grain wood and it doesn't have any finish on it. All right, now I'll go over each section uh, looking for anything else that needs to be puttied up. The other half of the top has a just a small crack here. The first leaf I grab has one similar to the table, and of course I'll check that uh, for any movement, and I'll go over the other leaves too. I noticed on this leaf for the first time all this darkness looks like water damage and water rings. I had also noticed blackness uh, in the other half of this tabletop, so uh, what I'll end up doing is using oxalic acid on this whole top. But I want to fill all these cracks first. I don't want water going down in them. How do you know when to putty or to patch? Uh, it can be tough sometimes. This defect doesn't seem too big at first until you start thinking about puttying it and how much putty that would be. It's really it's really like just a, a half inch long, three-eighths wide. Maybe that should be the rule. If you can measure it, patch it. I grabbed a few pieces of scrap, uh, oak, quarter sawn oak. Any of it would probably work. I kind of like this piece. This has the, this, the, the tighter grain that I see in this area here. So I'll use this one. Darn, this chip just came up. I'll have to make my patch a little bit bigger. Yeah, I think this area in here will do it.
When fitting the patch, you want to take into consideration grain direction. And of course, first thing that comes to mind is the direction of the face grain. <laughs> you don't want to go in that way. You want to go in this way. But what I'm talking about is the side grain. Look at the side grain. It's going, it's not running parallel with the face grain, it's going up in this direction, ever so slightly. Here's the side grain of the table. You know, this quarter sawn wood, it's fairly straight, but you can see it's going up at an angle. These pieces, definitely going at an angle. This is what caused this defect. But the grain is going in general in that direction. So with my patch, oh, no, this grain's going down. There you go. Now it's headed up in the same direction as this grain. It seems like a minor thing, and with this wood it shouldn't be much of a problem, but the uh, chatoyance of the wood needs to be the same, or it may make this impossible to touch up. Here's one. This one's got a real split in it. Let's uh, let's put a clamp on and see if it moves. Oh yeah. Now it's moving. So I decided I will glue this crack but I'm going to put a piece of veneer in there. I don't want to try to force it back together. Oddly enough, I have put a tape measure on it, and this end of this leaf is not as wide as the rest of the leaf. It's a 12-inch leaf. It measures 12 inches until we get to this end, and it's 11 and 7 eighths. So it seems foolish to try, to try to force it back together. It might not stay there anyway. It probably wouldn't stay there. So I'm going to taper a piece of veneer uh, as much as I can, and. Uh, get it in there, maybe use some epoxy and clamp it up. This is West System epoxy, but for doing small quantities, I just count drops to get the proportions right. This is my brother Greg's idea. I'm going to try using some uh, sawdust as a thickening agent. Uh, Again, it might help with the color. Yeah, I'm seeing a little movement in these cracks too. I'll give them the same treatment.
same routine, the two-part epoxy. This time unthinned. I want it to soak into these cracks. I even put uh, tape underneath to keep it from going through. I'm not going to apply too much pressure. There's a lot of forces keeping this, this wood split apart. And the reason I used epoxy was to fill any space that didn't come together. This leaf has small splits too, and it's funny, I didn't think they were moving. But I wasn't sure, so I slipped a piece of paper into the joint. It went in fairly easily. Then clamped it, and yeah, it's not moving. So there is movement there. I'll give it the same routine. Oh, I forgot about this patch I got to do. I mean, I wrote a note earlier when I was putting. I wasn't going to forget it. Hmm. Yeah, this piece should provide a good patch. The wood looks great. Check your grain direction.
Now, remember that grain direction. It's going slightly like that, so I want a plane in that direction. So I'm going to continue just uh, knocking back the putty, pulling this tape, and looking for any other places that might need a little putty or the patch that I found there. Uh, and then we'll uh, discuss the next step. Okay, all this has been in preparation for sanding. You know, a frequently asked question is, why don't I use power sanders on these antiques? And it's because, generally speaking, you don't want to flatten the top of an antique. You want to minimize the sanding. In this particular case, I have 32 square feet of tabletop. It's flat as a pancake, this good old quarter sawn oak. And uh, I've got a lot of color differences. I've got a lot of problem with black, blackness and stuff. I want to exolic it. So I'm going to sand this, and I am going to use a power sander. I'm going to use my stir straight line sander. These sanders are standard for the industry. They're good for big tabletops. We used to do a lot of conference tables and things like that. Bear in mind, this is a straight line sander. I never use an orbital on tabletops. I actually very rarely use an orbital. Most people don't have that option, so if you do have to sand the top of the orbital, you better be sure to then go back by hand and sand all those squiggly marks out. The inside of this apron is a little bit of a mess. It's kind of dirty. It's got tacks in it. This part here needs to be uh, cleaned up too. Here's that cracked apron I glued. Here, This is all hide glue. It didn't come off in the stripping process because they didn't use any water. I think I'll mix up some uh, crud cutter and clean the inside. We'll clean this, the bottom of the apron and the inside of the apron. At the same time, that'll help take off some of this hide glue. Oh, I almost forgot about the uh, hide glue over here. I've wetted this towel down with hot water. I'll just let that 
sit there. This is clean water on a fresh scrubby pad. Uh, here I see the apron is cracked. I better get that glued up. I'm going to loosen these screws. I just want to lift this up a little bit and get some wax paper under it. You know, thinking about how uh, both these aprons were cracked, I think I'm going to add some support blocks to these. Okay, I'm going to continue uh, sanding with 100 grit, this half and all the leaves. These are the kind of marks that I'm interested in, uh, these dark marks. And I'm not going to try to sand them away, but before we treat it with oxalic acid, I want to get the surface ready.
okay, that uh, I just need to do that 25 more times. I'm going to do all new pins. I do have a little problem here. Uh, it happened on the first one. This is a sliver of the old dowel, which means by definition that I did not drill it perfectly. I'm going to drill with a smaller bit and then dig these out so that the hole absolutely is the same. I'm going to, be, have, to, I'm going to have to be careful with these two. You know, I'm setting up to try to drill a smaller hole because of my concern over the accuracy over here. And I'm looking at these things and I, I'm wondering if I can't uh, pull them out. I'm going to apply heat and see if this thing will come out of there. sort of well. I have the original hole. That's the important thing. Um, I think I'm going to pull them out. I think I need to do something better. I may need to pre-drill it for the screw because the screw itself kind of expanded uh, the table pin. So I'm going to drill it, put the screw in, and then see if it'll come out. I don't even need the, uh, may not even need the heat. You can see that this one is loose in there. This is working really well. Um, it's really important that these holes be exact or the, you'll have a problem getting the leaves together. So uh, this is excellent. I don't even need to use heat. So I'll proceed now and do all the leaves and the tabletops. This also gives me an opportunity to uh, scrape and sand these edges uh, with no pins in the way. Now I'm just scraping and sanding these edges lightly. I just want to get rid of the, the superficial stuff. I don't want to get rid of the original mill marks or the numbers. Anyone that thinks that you can run these over a jointer, rejoint them and make the leaves and table halves fit together better, uh, it, it ain't going to happen. You'd be opening up a huge can of worms. Best leaving everything the way that it is. I almost forgot, I need to drill these holes deeper uh, so that they accommodate these new pins. Okay, I think I got the routine down. Check this out. to go, but really this shouldn't be a problem at all. This worked out well. I'm glad these pins aren't glued in. It's funny, I never glue leaf pins in myself, and um, I'm glad to see somebody else feels the same way. Doing my, uh, doing my last section here, and uh, I remember these aprons are too long. They stick out past the center of the table. I noticed that when this came in. Uh, what's happened is very common. Uh, over the past hundred years or so, this tabletop has shrunk. And of course, wood doesn't shrink across its length, so these stick out. So the two halves won't come together. If you're using the table with a leaf, you wouldn't notice that. But I've got to trim these. So where I need to cut is on the underside of this blade right here.
now after all that clamping let's see if I'm still in place here yeah not, not bad okay so the idea here is that this blade will now serve as a guide for my cut I'm going to switch from a Dazuki to a Kataba. This uh, back spline is getting in the way. Pretty cool. A little uh, outline of the molding there. Okay, now I can uh, set that leaf pin and do the others. Okay, I've got everything sanded to 100. Now I'm going to treat it with oxalic acid. Uh, there's, throughout all these sections, there's just random spots and uh, dark rings and stuff. This is just hot tap water. Our water is pretty hot. I'll use roughly four tablespoons in a quart. The measurements don't have to be precise. It's always great when the black marks go away instantly. <laughs> great. It's not going away instantly. Well, that one didn't go away instantly, but it's fading. Let's try another one. Maybe instantly was too strong of a word, but those rings disappeared, did disappear uh, right before my eyes, so I'll take that. Okay, I'm going to let this dry. Two things to note. Number one, the two main sections of the table appear to be lighter than the leaves. So we'll think about that. Also, you'll notice, especially on this section, that the, the water looks very uh, fisheye. And this could be an indication of uh, problems ahead with contamination. Okay, I've let everything dry overnight, and now uh, it needs to be rinsed really well. And Ella's tied up well away from the work area. Okay, we'll let all this dry overnight.
Okay, this is actually dried for a few days. Everything looks good. Now, uh, using that same double pad sander, I'm going to sand with 150. My first couple of passes will be at a 45 degree angle to the direction of the grain. We've treated these tops with water. It has a tendency to raise the grain. It actually didn't raise much in this old table, but it's a little fuzzy. So imagine, water gets on the grain, swells it up, it dries, it's sticking out. If you sand in the direction of the grain, you're going to push those fibers right back down where they were, and they will come back up later. So the first pass is at a 45, you're hoping to roll those, uh, the fiber over and cut it off. all these split outs along this edge. That's very characteristic of oak. I'm going to fill them with family wood. I think if I were to make a three hour video of me sanding the rest of this tabletop, there'd probably be people that actually watch it. But I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'm done sanding. Uh, now it's time to stain. So I'm going to use a uh, oil soluble dye stain. This is from uh, Lockwood's Standard Oak. Uh, um, that means I can mix it in some paint thinner. Actually, all kinds of solvents, but I'm going to mix it in some paint thinner and then also add some natural wood stain to the mixture. You're supposed to weigh this stuff, but uh So you let this uh, dissolve uh, overnight, and in anticipation of that, yesterday, I mixed some up. Now this is a double strength, this is two tablespoons by volume in eight ounces of paint thinner, but I'm going to make up the difference uh, by adding some of this wood stain too. Alright, let's, uh, 
Let's try it on one of the leaves. Yeah, I think that uh, looks good. That's definitely the original color. I think they were buying their stain from Lockwood's also. Yeah, that's very much the color. Okay, I'm going to uh, turn on the fan and stain this leaf, see what it looks like. Bone brush doesn't work so well on the moldings. Okay. I will let the stain dry overnight. Alright, top looks good. Uh, ready for a first coat. I'm going to get the first coat on the top. And uh, I'm not using a different kind of seal or anything. I'm just going straight to this uh, tongue oil varnish. You can see it's trying to fish eye in places. But wherever I see the fish eye, I'm just smoothing it out. And it seems to be staying smooth, at least for the present time.
let these dry overnight. All right. It's dried really nicely overnight. Now, I think I'm going to make, the color looks great. I think we might be making some color adjustments. But in the meantime, before I do anything else, uh, I'm going to turn these over and put a coat uh, on the bottom. Uh, I didn't show this when I was sanding the table, but I turned all these over, cleaned the bottoms, and just gave them a quick sanding. I don't really want to change them that much, but I think they should have a coat on them, even though they never did originally. A word about these uh, foam brushes. I never wanted to use these. I never liked the looks of them, but I discovered that they work great for this particular finish. Now, these are people refer to these as disposable brushes, and I never use anything with the word disposable attached to it. I hate that. But I discovered that they wash out. You can wash them with soap and water, uh, hang them up to dry, and I'll probably just use one brush for this entire job. I'm wondering if this isn't more of the original color. It's not so golden. I don't know what you call it. Very amber. We're going to have to look at that later. This is more like the color on the top. dried overnight, dried well, but of course, uh, being just the first coat, it dried uh, unevenly. I think you'll be able to see it here. So I'll just uh, give it a real light sanding, another coat, then these bottoms will be done, and tomorrow I can get back on the top again. good too, not too shiny, it's soaked in you know, quite a bit. Uh, the customer is coming in today to discuss the color, uh, so it's time to get started on legs. All right, and as I mentioned before, uh, I've got to make some uh, leg extensions for these. And, but what I'm going to do is they still need a lot of sanding, it's got these cracks which need to be addressed, and I'm going to work on that uh, while I'm thinking about what these extensions might look like. I'm going to put a clamp on these to uh, see if there's any movement in these cracks. Yeah, the, uh, the rest of the cracks in this section uh, aren't wide enough to do with a shim, so I'll just use putty. So uh, I'm going to go over all three leg sections. 
uh, gluing in wedges. If a crack's big enough, I'll glue a wedge in it, otherwise putty. So uh, I've been putting up all the cracks using the family wood putty. Uh, had another wedge I needed to make. So now I've got a lot of sanding to do on these. And I'll be thinking about my little uh, leg extensions while I'm doing that. So uh, I've got hours of sanding to do on these legs. And so what I'll do during the day today is I need to put another, I need to sand the tabletop. It's got just one coat on it. Do some color work. I got to get it all ready to put a coat on at the end of the day when I'm done sanding. And I'm also going to work on the drawing and the design of the leg extensions. So, when I need a break from sanding, I'll do uh, I do more sanding. So I'm wiping down the top in that manner uh, using a product called uh, Wax Wash Remover. I don't know what it is, it's a proprietary formula, something like paint thinner. If you remember, I thought I was seeing fisheye on that first coat. So wiping it down like that with the Wax Wash Remover uh, could help get the contaminants off the table. The customers approved the color on the top, so we're good there. But I had noticed when I was putting the first coat on, some of the aprons, like this one, are really light. I hope you can see it. It's actually the same color as the top, which is what I don't like. I want the apron to be slightly darker than the top, uh, like this section here. I know that this part right here is end grain, so it's naturally darker. But I think you can see the difference between this piece and this piece. And if I darken this, that will then help uh, with that high contrast line right there. So I'm going to use the same type of stain that I used to stain the table with, which is the uh, Lockwood oil soluble stain. But uh, in this case it's going to be the walnut number 444. So I took some paint thinner, mixed it in here, put in a tablespoon of the walnut stain. So it's a pretty concentrated solution. And I'll put some varnish in here, add some stain to it, and, and try it out in the apron, see what it looks like. Try a little out here. Oh, definitely needs more stain. Yeah. Here's that darker section of apron. And uh, it definitely helps. It's definitely a lot closer. It's a little hard to tell. But I think this looks good. I might add a touch more stain to it and then go ahead and do this section. Let's see if I can wipe this off. Try it again with a little bit more 
stain. Yeah. Okay, I've done, I think uh, out of the six sections of aprons, I toned uh, four of them. Now I can coat the top uh, with clear varnish. I don't know if you can see this, how well you can see this, but the apron blends really nicely with the top now. And I'm not seeing uh, any signs of that fisheye trying to happen. i got to keep an eye on that. Okay, uh, back to sanding. Uh, I want to take care of this wedge I glued in here, and uh, I really need to get back to making the new foot extensions. Okay, uh, time to take a break from the legs and get back on the leg extensions. So I made a drawing of the existing legs and then uh, designed this leg extension. I looked at photos of uh, commercial bun feet for sale, uh, none of which I could have bought for this project. I had to make these, but it gave me the ideas. I'm going to put out soon a detailed video of the designing and making of these leg extensions. So I need six blocks of wood, uh, four inches square, about seven or eight inches long. Actually, two of those could be smaller, but for the purposes now, I'll just keep them all the larger size.
Okay, I'm about ready to start turning, so I'm, I'm going to take a break from the legs and sand and get another coat on the tabletop. So, I've got uh, two coats to finish on the top. I've given it plenty of days to dry while I've worked on the other parts of this job. And so now I'm going to give it a third coat. I just need to knock over it lightly with a little 320. I'm just trying to get uh, any nits or anything off of here and just smooth it just a bit. I don't want to take off too much material. I've got a few touch-ups to do. I'll use a brush tip marker. Okay, now for that uh, next coat.
Well, the top looks great. I've got the heat turned up to 70. I'm going to let this sit for a couple of days. They give me plenty of time to get these uh, new feet turned and the legs sanded and get them caught up to the top. You know, I usually uh, turn spindles and such from the square, but these are so big, I think I'm going to uh, cut them again and make them octagonal. So I'm uh, all done making the feet, four big ones, two small ones. But before I uh, work on installing these on the legs, I'm going to get what I hope is the final coat on the top. Yeah, so this coat was the third coat. And actually, uh, it's dried uh, for probably four or five days because I've been working on other things. So I'm going to sand it, same routine. I'm going to sand it with uh, 320. I'll go over it with a gray pad. Wash it off with that wax wash remover and then put a, what I hope is the final coat of satin. And for the, uh, for the edges and the apron, I'll just use the uh, Scotch Brite pad. Wow, the tabletop uh, looks great, and it really laid down nice and smooth. Hardly any nits, almost no nits. I probably need to do very little of this, but I'm going to let it stride overnight. I'm going to let it dry for a few more days. At time to get back to the legs. So the the legs have been uh, stripped and sanded, 
ready to start the finishing process, but uh, it's got these sleeves from the old casters. I need to remove these and uh, see how my new feet are going to work out. So that's a 3 8 hole, pretty standard for these sleeves. Uh, I made the dowels on the uh, new feet 5 8 so I got to drill these out. Oh good, that looks looks well centered. Oh good, I think this came out well. Uh, I was really concerned about having it centered because of this uh, detail here. <laughs> Pretty good. Well, I think that works well. Alright, I'm going to do the rest. So the legs were always uh, darker than the table uh, top even originally. Uh, I put a little paint thinner on them and they look great. I don't think they need to be stained. I'll show you. And then I think I have a stain for the new turnings too. It's really just a darker version of the top, which is perfect. For the feet, I tried some of the same stain that I used on the top. And it's not bad at all, but it's uh, uh, on the light side. So this is the same oil-soluble dye stain I used on the top. And this is the standard golden oak I'm applying, which is too light. That's fine. And then I applied the same type of stain, the oil-soluble dye stain, but this is the walnut. Now, let me put some more paint thinner on that. This is just paint thinner. But I'm assuming that when I put a coat of varnish on it, that's what it's going to look like. So this looks good, but I might need to mix up a stronger solution. I'll use eight ounces of paint thinner. Two tablespoons of the powdered dye stain. So I'm going to let this uh, dissolve for an hour. 
Okay, let's try it with the stronger dye stain now. So this is paint thinner on the leg. Presumably this is what it's going to look like when I put the varnish on it. And here's the walnut stain. I better keep going with this and do the whole thing. But I think that looks good. And if it needs to be adjusted in any way, I'll do that with color in the finish. Okay, so uh, I'll let these dry overnight. And uh, then tomorrow I can put a coat of clear finish on the legs and the feet. We'll see what they look like. And over the next few hours, uh, as this dries, I'll come back and, and put even a little more on. Especially on the feet like this that uh, are a little bit lighter. Okay, these have dried overnight, and uh, time to put a coat of clear finish on the entire leg and foot. If these feet are too light, I'll be very happy. The worst thing would be is if they're too dark. I can darken them up. Okay, I'll let these dry till tomorrow. Oh, let me grab a leaf. So here you can see the color, it's, it's like the same color, but this is a little darker. And that's the way you want it to be. You never want, <laughs> legs should never be lighter than the tabletop. Any table, that would look silly. Uh, if legs are exactly the same color as the tabletop, then it looks like a a new piece of furniture from the furniture store. And antiques, the legs are always darker. Always. Okay. These have dried overnight. Finished really soaked in. But uh, before I put on a second coat of clear, the feet, uh, some of the feet are still a little bit on the light side. So I'm going to mix some uh, clear varnish. I'm going to mix in some of the same stain that I used. Uh, and then brush that coat on the feet, see if I can make them darker. Boy, it's a nice color. I think I can put even more stain in. Well, I love the color. I wonder if it's dark enough. I'll try a little bit. Hmm. It's definitely darker. Uh, not really sure if it's dark enough, but I think I'm going to go with that. I can always do it again. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and use this color. If it's, uh, it's definitely in the right direction, then I'll coat these with clear. And if, it, uh, if it's not dark enough, I imagine this is going to need four coats. This is just the second coat, so I can add it again to the third coat, even the fourth coat. You know, when uh, matching colors, uh, people often think you mix up a particular stain, uh, put it on there, and it's the right color. And that's rarely the case. Typically, you uh, build your color in layers, just like this. I stained the wood. Now I've got stain in the finish, one or two coats, then the clear. The finish itself carries with it a really nice amber color. So you're building up the color in layers. Now I need to uh, clear coat the rest of these legs, but I forgot I still have touch-ups to do. I'll use a brush tip marker. This is that uh, wedge I put in that big crack. All right, 
Let them dry overnight. Yeah, these have dried overnight and uh, they look great. Uh, you can feel little nits here and there. I'm going to go over them with a Scotch Bright pad uh, just to smooth them out a bit and then I'll put on a coat of satin, which I'm hoping will be the final coat. legs came out uh, really well. So the uh, next step is to uh, go over these tops with some paper just to, to really smooth. So I'm going to go over them with paper and then I'm going to assemble the table. So these tops are, are really dried well with very little dust and stuff in it but the paper has just enough abrasive quality to make it feel silky smooth and uh, and if I find any large nits, I'll hit them with the razor blade. So there was a little uh, light dot there where that little uh, nit was, and I'll just put a little touch of color on it. Now's the time to wax these up.
and there it is. This is a late 19th century, you know, circa 1900, late Victorian dining table made out of quarter sawn oak. Uh, it's been in use, but the, the, the finish on the top had worn off. It was in really bad condition with lots of rings and stuff. Uh, one of the aprons was badly cracked. Uh, I can't find it on the outside here. If I looked underneath, I could tell which one it was. But that went back together really well. And then a big part of the job was the problem with the height of this table. The original casters raised this table about two inches. And they were small wooden casters, and they just didn't work and damaged the floors. They were never good. And then they needed the table to be a little bit higher to accommodate uh, chairs. And so I made new feet. Uh, tried to design them to go with the table, and uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good.